morning and welcome to In Demand. My name is Trudy Kerr. And I'm Jane Dennis and tonight we are going to be looking at women in fashion. It's a billion dollar industry but how much does fashion really impact the content of our wardrobes? Mm -hmm. To answer that question and much more, we're joined this evening by gorgeous stylist Carino Camilleri and wonderful fashion designer Carla Grima. First up, we speak with Carina. Hi, nice to see you. Lovely for you to join us, Karina. Really nice to have Thank you, you join Thank us. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, no, You're extremely great. welcome. <laughs> yeah, Karina, one of the things that I'd be really interested to know in the capacity as being a fashion stylist is why is being stylish important at all? <laughs> oh gosh, you really threw me into the Straight deep in end. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, no my soft arm bends on, you know, yeah. stop me from sinking. <laughs> um, well, I think what's really important is that um, you, you look and you feel good, right? Now, if you can incorporate being stylish with that, it's a bonus because automatically it will help you feel good. It's all in context. Um, uh, you know, you don't need to. One doesn't really need to wear designer label or um, go for anything ultra expensive. In fact, if you're young, I sincerely believe that you should, you know, do your jumble sale stuff yeah. and mix with a few good pieces. And then as you grow older, perhaps refine your wardrobe a little bit because you can wear less things which are, you know, maybe not... not um, the fabric isn't so good, so you might want to be a bit more careful. Um, but I, I definitely think that once you start looking good, you automatically feel good. And then, hey, being stylish that, is that always a, li sense. a little bit... Um, you know, everybody likes a bit of attention, I suppose, eh? whether we like to admit it or not. So. Oh, no, I'm happy to admit that. I like attention. <laughs> no, I don't like attention. You don't as long I as do you it. keep it in context and not make it the most important thing in of the world, course. you know, because there are obviously other things. But, you know... In this industry that I'm in, I always worry that it's so fake and superficial and, hey, you know, is this, where I, is this what I'm in the world for, to, to see whether yellow and red look nice together? <laughs> which yes, they do, I, by the way. The they do. football team you we said to us yeah. <laughs> Highly intentionally coordinated. But, you know, when you start feeling a little bit um, lopsided because of the industry being artificial, um, a very, very dear person once said to me, listen, if you make somebody feel good, about themselves because you've either helped them or, or you've said something to encourage them about how they look, then it's not as fake and artificial and as superficial as you think, you of know? Of course. So is, is that your motivator? It helps me remain grounded because, you know, you can, it, you can get into the diva world yes. and it's like, OK, no, yes, you're right, <laughs> ugly, no, no, you, you know? So that keeps me grounded, yes. Knowing that perhaps with a, a sincere comment, because ultimately... Um, I think we, you and I might have spoken about this. Ultimately, my wish is to see everybody looking as good as they can mm -hmm. for themselves, ultimately. I don't really enjoy going to the capital city and seeing people running around, women especially, in leggings or in, you know, just not even bothering to, to put on a little bit of lipstick or, or, or do their hair up. I, I would really like to see people... Respecting themselves and looking good. I'm feeling so good do, about so it. So do you think do you think that is an element of neglect or self-respect, um, lack of self-respect if they don't do that? Then do you think that that is a psycho psychological thing that they're not um, making themselves stylish or not doing the best that they can, looking the best they can? I don't. I, I'm, I'm not sure I can answer that. What, what I, I think happens a lot as well is that. Um, as a, as, a, as a nation, as a population, we're not leaders, we're followers. So everybody wants to be in the safe bracket. As soon as somebody comes out of the box and wears something different or alternative, especially way back perhaps a little bit less today, but it still happens, you know, you're easily pointed at or laughed at. So people tend to um, follow what they're being told. And I believe that Sometimes you go into shops and um, they, they do tell you, which they pass on information which might not be the right information. Right. Sure. It's the cell mm -hmm. that's important. It's the, exactly. You said exactly. something really interesting. You said that, that to be stylish, you don't it's not about the labels. It's about, you're talking about going to jumble sales or, or that sort of thing. How, and that to me is really, a really kind of wide statement. But how do you rate style? In Malta, how does it how does it compare with other countries? 
I think I need my arm bands and the tire. <laughs> <laughs> Come or on. maybe the police outside the outside Let's the studio. Have it. Let's have it. Because, uh -huh. because are it, 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 you know, even if even if there aren't the, the big brands or, or brands that you might have abroad, you're saying you don't actually mm. need them in order to be stylish. So I'm asking, how how do you rate style here in in Malta? Again, I I will go back to saying that you know, if if as individuals we stop being um, followers and start being a little bit more individual and ultimately being honest and sincere with yourself. And once you put something on, if you start fiddling about and arranging, you know, and if you look in the mirror, which is what we do when we get dressed, and you're looking in, in the hope. mirror and you're sorting out your skirt and you're pulling it and you, you know, then you're not comfortable, mm. then you're not mm. looking good, then you can't look stylish. Right. So ultimately, be, go with that gut instinct. You look at yourself and you think, okay, your body language says it all, of really. Course. So that will lead you to being comfortable, will lead you to looking good, will lead you to being stylish. And the stylish you're talking about there, you mentioned a couple of things that indicated that you're seeing style is about, also about being an individual, not being a follower, but, but being totally, an individual. Uh, totally. And does that, uh, just a, a, a question that popped into my head, does that come with age? Because I know for a fact, I mean, I, I've never really followed fashion. And that might just be because when I was... Well, I mean, no, I'm not fabulous. talking about today. She's today I look fabulous. wonderful. Um, but Yellow is one of my favourite colours, oh, by is the it? way. Yes, I, yes, she I knew that. Been... She knew that before you came <laughs> on. She said, get me a yellow <laughs> shirt. She, she, it's very unpopular on the island because they say that it, it attracts mosquitoes. But, <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> and leather, of course. Um, but... but you know, when I was younger, I might have developed my own style, but as you get older, you do find out what suits your figure, what you're comfortable with. Is that an age thing? Or Listen, is that... This is something which is very, very interesting and very much what's happening now. Um, I was watching this um, interview with Anna Winter, who's, of course, the goddess, you know, the biggest and most influential sure. person in the world with regards to fa fashion. And what she was saying was that a lot of the designers now are not, in fact, she was saying that the trend word is such an ugly word, and it's not about trends anymore. Each designer is, has his own um, women followers, and they are designing for them. So, you know, you it's don't... It's very static, you, then, it becomes static. Um, I don't know if it's static or if it's... Um, um, I, they're picking up on women who obviously can pay this here we're talking about designer label so it has to be a, a particular women who can afford mm. afford to do it i believe that it will eventually go down even into the high street this 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 thought this way of thinking that you don't really you know going back to what we were saying before you don't if if um tight jeans are are in and um, you, your body is not suitable for that why do you have to wear it, you know? Mm. So these designers are picking on groups of women. So if you're a, a classic, you know, you've got your this and your that and your that. And then if you're a little bit, you know, um, avant-garde, you can go follow the Japanese designers. And the, the designers worldwide are seriously picking up on this. And they don't care about the, you know, okay, yellow is in fashion. <laughs> or, <laughs> I well, said that you, randomly, yes. actually. <laughs> I did say that. But it is, isn't it? <laughs> or um, this, uh, this summer, for sure. I mean, oh, especially, um, I think, in, in summer, we do go for a lot of, mm. of different colours. But going back to, to what I was saying, um, designers are picking on women who, influential women, and... Um, passing on the look to these women rather than picking on a colour as a trend mm. or a shape of a skirt or a length of a skirt. This is why nowadays we see, you know, a variety of uh, lengths of skirts mm. or a variety of shapes of trousers. Because so, ideally, if you're not the right shape, you still have something what to wear, which is still fashionable, which is still in... So if you if you get to a certain if you get to a certain age and you don't think you've been stylish or fashionable your entire life, there's an you can start at any age. You can say, okay, you know, it's my 55th birthday and I'm going to start looking gorgeous. And you don't look that old. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> um, can you do it at any age? Do you think that some people who have historically not been very stylish could could embark on uh, a change? I, you know, usually this is something that uh, sort of is already. It's really in you, and you don't really need to think too much about it. It does. You can improve as you grow older, and anybody um, who 
who is observant and who wants to learn can look about around and see what um, others others are doing and then make it their own. Mm. But I meet up with a lot of people who say that they can't. So how much of that then, given what you do for a living, how much of um, your ideas and your views are based on gut instinct and how much of that is based on stuff that you've learned? For myself or in general? For you, for you. For myself, it's practically always gut instinct. I don't really, really follow any rules in anything. <laughs> um, never did. Um, but then when I come to uh, style for, you know, editorials or for um, adverts, then it's, that's actually quite challenging yeah. because you've got a, a theme or you've got a... And sometimes you're, you're doing things which, you, you know, you're not exactly... Um, it's not really your style, which, which is a little bit harder in my case because I'd like everybody to, you know, dress a little bit... Yes. <laughs> what was that? You're looking for, look at that. I know, that's it. Because I saw that? you today and I thought, yeah, I, I love that look. I you was, look great. Who was I talking to recently? And they were like, a suit. Um, and and, and, and um, running shoes. And they say, but running shoes? I said, yeah, why not? What's wrong with that? Yeah. You of know? course. Why do you have to, you know, you, it, it's the mix and the match. Mm. I mean... Listen, I, I'm really enjoying... I, I'm suddenly re-evaluating <laughs> what I'm wearing. I'm really nervous now. <laughs> um, but I'm really enjoying... We're loving talking to you. Um, we're going to carry on talking. We're going to be joined by Carla in sec just a second, who you know very well. Absolutely. So, yes. ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Come and join us in just a few minutes. Welcome back to In Demand, where we're speaking about women in fashion with two fantastic ladies. And we've been joined by fashion designer Carla Grima. Apparently, hello, nice to see hello. you. Hey, how are you? Good. Very good. Lovely to have you on the show. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks. Um, we're not going to throw you into the deep end, sorry. <laughs> Quite as much. Or old Karina. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, Carla, being a fashion designer, it sounds like a dream job. But how did you get to where you are now? What's your story? Um, okay, so I started studying design at MCAS in Malta. Um, I was there for a few years, which was great because I got to experiment in all these different workshops, you know, working with wood, textiles, metal. And I developed a real love for texture, which brought on this interest of fashion. Uh -huh. um, applied for some unis abroad and kept studying in London and Paris and worked there for a few years and... So you've worked in, not just um, studied abroad, you've also worked in London and Paris as well? Yeah, I worked there, well I worked in Paris whilst I was studying and then, which was really, a really great experience. Oh, right. It's so different to London, so yeah. it was a really good opportunity to say, look, I left Malta to study this let's see how many different fashion capitals I can learn from. And then went back to London for a few years of work and then came back here. You came back here. And, and so when you came back here, you knew that you were going to be setting up your own business? No, it was all... Business? I was here on holiday, to be honest, and I really missed the lifestyle. I, I you know, my friends, the Mediterranean laid-back lifestyle of having a life, to be honest. <laughs> So that sounds familiar. Can't, can't have a life in London. <laughs> you only have a life here. That's why can't we really here. have a life in London, because no matter how hard you work, you just... Haven't got any money. Always <laughs> living like a student, you know? That's it. That sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I moved back here, had some freelance jobs, so I kind of tested out the move. And then I had sort of a break where I didn't have any work, but was making... I started making my caftans. And organically, it developed into this business. Good so. heavens, that's amazing. I like the way you say, you know, I just started making my caftan. So that was, so you were designing your own pieces then? Yeah, well, I was always designing pieces and selling little bits, you know, okay. having small events at my parents' house or my boyfriend's parents' house and just meeting people, networking a little bit and listening to, like what Karina said, listening to what people want and finding your niche and designing for that niche. So 
It's, it's, but that's just... not where your business is now. You're now exporting abroad. You're designing and sending uh, uh, your, your collections and sending abroad. I mean, the, the business has really grown. Is that not right? Well, it's grown. It's still at the start. We've had two collections. And luckily, when we started the summer collection, we had a really good opportunity to distribute in Australia, which really, which was great because it was in Byron, which is really what the brand is about. You know, see like the beachy life, um, health, and being active and sociable. And it sort of gave me, it inspired me to keep going, to go into winter and now into our second summer. Wow! wow so congratulations yeah. on that. It's when you fun. when you designed then, you talked mm -hmm. a little bit about your inspiration. And earlier, Karina was saying about um, designers tend to have a, a fixed individual in mind or a type of woman in mind. Do you have a, a, a woman in mind when you do when you design? Um, I don't really have a woman in mind. I have a lifestyle in mind. Okay. Uh, for me, that's really inspiring, and it's why I've built this as a Mediterranean brand, not just you know a fashion brand. It's inspired by what I do in my everyday life, what my clients do. You know, we like to go for long lunches with our girlfriends. You want to wear something special, but you want to be comfortable. It's hot. Yes. Something that's breezy, but colorful. Very so. good. I like that. That's <laughs> you just good. solved all yes, my problems. That's it. <laughs> that's it. We're coming over. So that's, you know, lifestyle is really important. And then it's just always observing what's around you is what's going to keep inspiring you, keeping documenting it, photos, sketching all the time, and then building it from there. So every collection has different inspiration, but it's always a similar, always yeah. under the same kind of umbrella, you know? And you've mentioned before about the sea and your inspiration coming from the sea and the Mediterranean, but would I be right in saying that your style is quite, and your inspiration is quite unique for Malta? It's not necessarily what you'd find everywhere in Malta. Because it's, it, it, is, it isn't, it's very, what I understand, and I love your clothes, it's very relaxed, it's not Italian. Flowy. It's not that sort of, I'm looking at Karina going, oh, good grief, maybe I'm saying a complete <laughs> fashion disaster. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm coming in with words like flowy, I'm sure that's not a fashion <laughs> word at all. I like, flowy, flowy, flowy. Yeah, like, it's just with our hands, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know but, what we mean. So it's, but it's not Mediterranean, is that right? Is that right to say that you're, you're bringing something Mediterranean, sorry, Mediterranean, it's not necessarily Maltese, are you saying that it's bringing something um, Well, for me it's very Mediterranean, and it's sort of what I would wear every day, I guess. And I'm Mediterranean, I'm Maltese. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but I think, I think they do have a bit of a point, because I think Maltese women in general don't really wear a lot of these um, clothes which look very flattering for any body shape. That's, yeah, that, that was you know? the thing saying about, yeah. And I think this is a perfect introduction. This is what a, a lot of women can wear. And more, what you were saying about... Um, um, no, anything? lunching, you know, how uh -huh. you go to lunch. And say, I, I've worked with um, Carla and the, the pieces, you can actually start by wearing them in the morning or going out to lunch and then if you mm -hmm. happen to, you know, go into an evening cocktail or aperitivo, you're still okay. Yeah. So I need to hang out with you guys yeah. a lot more. I need to be wearing with you. I'm nodding here like my life just, is just, like that. Just carry yes. an extra pair of shoes, you know, just That's in case it. you go into dancing and then... And then you <laughs> I wish my <laughs> life were that fluid. <laughs> <laughs> we can just segue into dinner. <laughs> So, so they're designed for comfort as well. So you don't have a particular shape of woman in mind. They're they're very good. No, I mean it everyone. depends what your style is. Like I like to wear them quite loosely, but sometimes I'd wear a fitted dress with them, and okay. clients would do the same, yes. or they'd send me pictures of themselves in really interesting trousers and wearing it to a cocktail party, and I would have worn it to a barbecue, you know. So. It's great to see how people can style them. Is it nice to and see your style so, out there? Is it nice yeah. to sort of open a magazine and say, oh, somebody's wearing one of my pieces? Or um, see someone in a we'll restaurant? Go to an event, maybe. And maybe an event. Can... I haven't seen anyone in the magazine. Maybe this summer. But <laughs> being out and about and <laughs> seeing people in your summer. things, that's lovely. But yes. it's, it's great. I, just, I love receiving photos from people who are travelling around and happen to have the items with them. And, you know, you're seeing it in Greece, you're seeing it in India. Oh, and it's oh, nice, nice to Isn't feel fabulous? like you're travelling with it, you know. <laughs> oh, I really like that. That's so wonderful. Um, you're launching your summer collection. You're going about doing that right now. Um, where do you start with a summer yes. collection? Where does the inspiration for that... When, when did you start? Did you start putting, in winter for you're summer You're launching the summer collection right now. 
When did that start? Well, okay, so winter was quite miserable this this year, mm, you know, non-stop awesome rain. <laughs> And I started designing when I launched the winter collection, so December, December, January. And it was really cold, so I just sort of put my heating on, made the studio feel like summer. Oh, OK. And just got into that vibe. And um, I had been collecting images and inspiration. And this summer is all about the mood. It's, about, it's called Serenity. So it's color palettes. Um, images that make me feel serene and it reflects the mood of the clothing when people feel it i want them to feel that serenity and i want them to identify the clothes with the concept so everything is quite muted this summer where last summer it was really bright oh, i see um we have a lot more pieces so easier to mix and match and make up more outfits than the last year and I just I just want that mood to travel and transcend in people's wardrobes and you're saying that, that the mood is serenity this is a mood that you've created for the collection or, or is that a, is that the theme for the whole for, for fashion in general what or is it no specific? it's it's the theme for my for summer collection right. it's you know quotes that make me feel serene or books I've read that have this concept it's just oh, the, a mood that I want to that sounds Translated like a really nice clothes. process to immerse yourself into, <laughs> to be able to get yourself into the mind space to create something. And you really did whack the heating up and make it like it was summer. <laughs> Put your flip-flops on, well, when a I bag was... of sand on the floor. No? <laughs> when I was designing my prints, I did, just because, I don't know, the cold, I'm not a very yeah, wintry you know, I person. could imagine you'd have to. So you've, you've created your collection. How do you launch a collection? What does that look like? Well, I'm working with Karina. <laughs> oh, We've worked together before. Last summer we worked together for two events. And um, it's always great to work with somebody who has experience in doing this locally and, you know, ha has a great sort of uh, bunch of models. And um, it's selecting a place that reflects the collection as well. I see. And yeah. selecting girls within the, you know, people who are excited to do it and enjoy doing it. and. From there, we build up what hair and makeup should look like. Everything has to fit in. And it's great to do it with someone rather than doing it alone. Because you've got that. It's good. We've, we've kind of introduced a collaboration here on the island, which, mm -hmm. is, which is not an easy thing to do. Most people like to compete. It's, it's, it's not very Maltese to collaborate, in my opinion. I mean, I could be proven wrong. But, you know, once you meet up with a group of people that you click with, and Carla is definitely one of, the, one of those people. It's, well, it's, you know, she's not a walkover, you know? She's not like, because I'm there saying, <laughs> OK, do this, do that, do that. floating like, arena. But listen, how about... And she's, you know, she's, she's then... <laughs> you're all of a sudden mesmerised and say, gosh, she's bloody right, you know? Can you say that on the TV? Oh, sure. I think mean, you've just said it. But anyway, we, so we're, we're working on these collaborations where we work with um, maybe three designers work with each other. Mm -hmm. They complement each other. And um, th th there's a lot of fun in that because it, it, there's growth in it. Yeah, you, know? you, have to, you have to, I mean, it's such a small place. You have to do it to network with people, introduce each other to each other's clients and um, tell people about what you're doing. If you don't, if you keep it to yourself and you remain in your niche, yes. you're not going to grow in a, you know, in Malta where it's all word of mouth. Really. And it's also, I find, not very practical because I'll try and say this, and not many people wear head to toe mm. from the same brand or design. Of course. Mm -hmm. So if you're showing them how, you know, how to wear different brands, they'll end up buying more of your brand because they'll get used to doing that because this is what, what we do, you know, we, the, the brands will actually complement each other as well. Listen, ladies, I, I'm, I feel like I'm going to go home and change my entire wardrobe having spoken to you. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really enjoying talking to you. We have to take a break, Ooh. Um, but we will be back, ladies and gentlemen, in just a few minutes. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to In Demand, where we are talking about women in fashion with the lovely Carla Grima and Karina Camilleri. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I have to say, it's ever so slightly intimidating, because I do I'm feel... Glad you, I'm glad you said that, <laughs> because I was sitting here thinking that. Did you have to And I'm you? now glad we've got the wine, <laughs> I have to say. We had a brief discussion about what on earth we were going to wear, bearing in mind that you were coming on the show. Listen, um, 
I've got a question for you. Do, do we've touched on this briefly, and I think um, you kind of mentioned this in the first section of the show, but do women lead fashion, or does fashion lead women? Are we followers, or as a designer or a stylist, do you look at what women are wearing and and see what the trends are? How, how does that work? Is it is it dictated to women, or do we we have feedback? Hmm. It depends on the individual, <laughs> though. It's a yes. bit of both. The majority of women, Maltese women, I think, um, are led by it over here. But I, again, with with these emerging designers, and you know, now we're it's it's, it's happening, and there are a few who are good and who make sense. Um, hopefully, um, we'll get more people to be individual and be leaders rather than followers and not be dictated just by trends. For sure, and I, I think that question is also to you as well, Carla. Do you, when you're sitting down, you just talked about your collection and, and the theme of the collection. How much of what you do is looking at women and, and what they want, or do you go and say, actually, I think this would be what would suit a woman? Do you see what I mean? you see what the difference I think, is? Well, for me, it's a bit of both because um, Moza is my main market mm. and it's very different to say Australia because in Moza it's like we have rules you know if you have a sleeve that's too long because you want it to be too long a Mozi's woman is gonna say it should be here and oh, really? here. You think so? So they do kind of tell you and if you want to sell you have to listen to these things although you try to sell your design you cannot Gosh. be stubborn about it because at the end of the day you You're not going to sell. You need to find your customers and you need to sell to them. So it's definitely a mix of both for me. So there are, there are commercial restrictions then, obviously. The size of Malta, the sh not got the breadth of shops, and the shops that are here obviously are, are limited in what they stock. I mean, I know, I'm talking about the UK, I'm familiar with the UK. Mm -hmm. There are shops, high end and low end, that churn out a vast amount of stuff, lots of you know, great stuff, ter terrible stuff. Can you get that kind of um, breadth here and to how much does that impact the affordability of fashion? So if I don't have a lot of money and there, aren't, there isn't that much choice, can I still be stylish or fashionable? Well, I mean, listen, you can look good in a white t-shirt and um, a pair of these pants, as long as they fit properly. Okay, make sure you buy the right size. Stop thinking you're a size eight if you're a size 12. You know, because you can't be a size 8 for life. <laughs> oh, that, I love that. That's it. I was a That's size 8, so I'm always a size well, 8. Yes, or, yeah. you know, like when I was young, I always had... I always wear eyeliner and red lipstick. So now I'm 55 and I'm still wearing a black eyeliner. No, move, change. You look, it will actually help you look younger. Hey, do you think that, um, that 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 size... You mentioned size, yeah. and mm -hmm. you mentioned size before, and I'm asking both of you, um, does that have... Dressing for your shape... Is that one of the crucial parts about well dressing and dressing stylishly? Top, top of the list, for sure. To totally at the top. Yeah. So, it's, it's, so there's colour and shape and uh, fashion down here, but dressing for your body shape is right Definitely. up at the top. And I, I think, I think women get that later in life. You know, when you're younger, you want to fit in, so you're dressing like all your friends. And then once you get more comfortable with yourself and kind of find yourself, you start realising what you should wear and how you should present yourself. And it's quite... Mm -hmm. Carla is a little bit more optimistic than I am. <laughs> she, see, she, sees the, she sees the television in colour. I see it in black and white. Uh, yeah, this is what I would like. I would like to see women, as they grow older, and become more respectful to their body and realising what um, looks good. But let's face it, we still see women. Yes. Know, larger size women, and they're wearing really tight dresses, you know, when they, they sit down, they're ha having to do this, so... Which is not comfortable, obviously, having to... Yeah, to I, used to, I used to have a shop above you. It was always a dream when I was young to have my own shop, so I, I went into it for a while. And um, when people used to come to the shop, um, not many people used to come to the shop, really, <laughs> but <laughs> that's why I closed down. No, but seriously. Um, and they would go in, on and try a dress, and when the, the, the client would walk out, if she'd be walking out, you know, with her shoulders hunched or arranging her outfit or 
not in the right posture, I'd say, listen, just take it off straight away. Did mm -hmm. you? Chase her up the street. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Come back and take that off. Go back in. Um, because that, you know, your body language dictates whether you're comfortable or not. I'm becoming more paranoid now. But I think it's even if you... <laughs> body language stuff. If you're a smaller size, you know, and you're not a teenager, but you dress like you're a teenager because you are a smaller size, I think that's just... A no-no. A strain, you know. <laughs> We got it. Touche. Hooray. <laughs> I just, I don't understand how people feel comfortable. It, it, it is very difficult as you grow older to let go of certain things and find a style that you, you can look good in because mm. it becomes, the choice becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So you have to work harder and harder and harder. Do you think that's an organic change or do you think there's a big shift at some stage? You think, oh, you know, I really need to take stock or do you think it's a very fluid change from being the person I was when I was 21 mm -hmm. to the person that I am at 45? <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I think I think different. You know, people will experience different journeys for that. Um, and as we grow older, it's it's very difficult to to let it go away. Eh? Um, especially when you know you're trying on a skirt and you know, oh gosh, it's too short. You're trying on a, a pair of trousers. Oh gosh, they're too tight. Oh, you know. So uh, it's already difficult getting older. And <laughs> you know, with your wardrobe, you can only wear you know skirts up to here and maybe trouser suits and. Again, the legs, you know, go funny because maybe veins start appearing. <laughs> so it's all very well for her to sit here and... and I am going through yeah. it, yes. <laughs> Wave her, her little fingers at us. She, she's she's Carl's young. Carl's a bit great. outnumbered this evening I on the age I'm, front. I'm interested whether, on that topic, that whether it's this identity thing. So, you know, when you're young, you have this identity. And then you've got to almost change your identity with your style. Is it, it, style and fashion really linked to who you are and the identity that you want to portray. For sure. I mean, I dress this way because it's part of my identity as mm. a designer who designs clothing that's comfortable and out of natural fabrics that are colourful, you know. So you're if helping I... to shape the identity of people. You're creating identities for them. Um, I, to be honest, that's kind of, sort of, but that's also where a stylist comes in. As a designer, you do design for certain clients in mind, but then it's stylists that help you put it together sometimes and show you how the market will respond to that. So it's quite... Um... It kind of work, works, it works mm. hand in yeah. hand. Mm. But I do believe that with what you're doing, you know, with this fluid and um, natural fabrics that you use, I think it is a real good um, stepping stone for Maltese people for people in hot countries, mm -hmm. because these are things that we can wear throughout summer, irrespective of our shapes. Yeah, well, and, and, and that's such a crucial point. I was, gonna, I, was gonna, I was sort of finding a way to get into that and ask you, because the average woman's size is not a size 6 or an 8 or a, or a 4, as models often are. It's a size 14. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you sit down as a stylist or as a designer, who are you thinking of? Are you thinking of the average size? Or are you thinking of, and kind of understandably so, the smaller sizes? Because generally clothes do look a little bit better on they smaller do. sizes. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you do? Because it's a very good point that you said that, that Carla's clothes suit any shape. They do. I think you're... Is you, that a commercial decision? <laughs> No, to be honest, it all started as a one-size concept. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I it? wanted to see, like, oh. the caftan, and how many sizes yes. would it fit and how is everyone going to wear it. And it's developed from that and it's been quite positive. I mean, sometimes you do, you know, like the trousers. If I put them on a tall model at a show, my customers will say, you've designed those for tall people. And you do have to explain to them that, no, it's just, it's a tall model, but... I'm telling you, you look great. You look and amazing in it. Try them on and see how you feel. That's all. I'm not going to tell people what to buy, you know. You just have to try it on. Because fashion can be cruel. When, when you see new collections come out by designers and styles and you see the, the beautiful models mm. walking down the runway and you think, wow, that's really nice. And you know darn well that would not look good on you. But that's what's been... <laughs> well, I, it's debatable, you know, because you are watching a show, you are watching a spectacle. You don't go and watch a fashion show to watch, you know, um, larger size people 
they, they are mannequins, they are ha hangers, hangers, so they're bound, mm. they have to look like that. But once those th um, items go into the store, especially we're talking here about the big designers, the high end, they're usually toned down and made mm. for me and you and, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's also, if you have a huge collection and you're putting a show together, you're using small sizes for also economical reasons. Right, okay. <laughs> and to be honest, and it, people will tell you that in the industry, that it does help, you know, although they are like hangers. So is that. Saves on the fabric. I think, I think you've too. got the modelling agency as well, Karina. Um, and when we think about models and the people that we use, and when they're in magazines and they're on photo shoots, they've, they're all very beautiful. Do you think that has a, a positive or negative effect on the rest of us? Well, listen, to become a doctor, you need to study medicine, right? To become an accountant, you need to be good at math, etc. So, hey, to be a good model, you need to have a good body, you need to be tall, you need to be good looking. Most of all, you need to have a fantastic personality and be respectful. So, wow, wow I was not make, expecting you to say that. Does that make us, the rest of us, feel as though it's something to aspire to, or does it make us feel as though I, I'm never going to achieve that, or I'll never look good in that, or that, that's just not really representation of I my think, life? But it's sort of, when, when you see a beautiful painting, you're not going to look at it and think, oh, I'm never going to paint that painting. Sometimes you just have to see fashion in the same way, just appreciate it for a beautiful piece. I've bought things just because they're beautifully made, but I don't necessarily wear them. <laughs> Look at them. Really? <laughs> you know, on I've travels, about like, women like crazy you. pieces that are just beautiful to look at but I don't feel like I need to wear them, the piece of you, art. I, I, I really understand, understand you, actually, because I bought a pair. You know when the heelless shoes came? Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, oh, I can't remember. Heelless the, shoes? Yeah, Did they, I they miss kind something? of curved. I think Alexander Lisa McQueen had started, yes. started them, but there was also a, a particular shoemaker. I can't remember his name. Anyway, and they, 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 they're a bit con concave, right? Mm -hmm. So over here, balance. just dents in, oh, it, okay. round, it rounds off. So it's very difficult to walk in these shoes. And I, I bought a pair. And when they arrived, my husband said to me, make sure you can wear them. Because, you know, <laughs> you pay, like you're saying, you pay, you know, a good a sum of money for these, <laughs> this sort of thing. So um, I stood on the, I stood, <laughs> I stood on, a, on a thing like this. We've got, you know, similar floor to this. And, and I, I, I walked around the slab, which was mo not, no more than two paces, you know, to the left. I'm like, look, look, I can walk, I can walk, I can keep them, yeah. And I kept them and I wore them. I mean, I would go to the place with other shoes and wear them before I go into the place and kind of hob. They look amazing. And then I ended up keeping them on, keeping them on my shelf, you know, where normal people keep a vase. <laughs> Or oh, no, I like that. pictures <laughs> with their children. Oh, for, I had them. a pair of shoes. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I've got, I've got a question very quickly. If I like something, I bought these shoes once, I love them, and there was a brown pair, and I didn't buy the brown pair because mm -hmm. I thought, no, buy one pair. If I see something I like, it fits me, it's stylish, it's my ongoing conundrum. Do I buy two? Do I buy one in each colour? You know, I think that's how guys shop, eh? Yes, men shop like them. They like that 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 thing that Yes, my husband shops like that. A good shirt, that. let's uh -huh. get every colour. Uh -huh. yes. Really? Or too white, too black. I'm doing yeah. something really so wrong. That's wrong. So that's we, wrong. I mean, we, we've had that's this... That's a no, is it? That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> we've had this discussion and we're not... Neither of us are terribly huge shopping fans, are we? No, but it makes me go up. I go out in hives when I go shopping. But I'm sure what a few What I would do, too. though, just to solve your problem, is if you are going to buy your black um, and brown shoe, which are the same style, you try and wear them with different um, things. So if this is your kind of uniform for your black shoe, I see. once you wear your brown one, you know, try and go wear it with a skirt or wear it with something which is different to the shape that you are wearing now. And that will make you think um, that you're wearing different shoes. Ultimately, you know, wear things for yourself and not for other people. Great. I love that. Lovely and piece what of advice. a way to come to the end of the show. It has been brilliant having you on the show this evening. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I wish you all the best, and, and to both of you, for the launch of the collection and the, and the ongoing season. I really wish you all the very best this season um, and the seasons to come. Thank you very much indeed. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, ladies. Thank you.
Don't miss In Demand next week where we'll be speaking to some equally fantastic women. <laughs> and if you want to know what that show is all about, because we're being quite elusive, um, just go on to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash In Demand TV Malta. You can check out this show. You can check out Carla's collection and what Karina's up to, as well as you can find information about all the other shows that we have in the season. Thank you very much. This has been In Demand. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Good night.